Hi there everyone, welcome along to another video here with me, Jenny Kirk. And I thought today I'd do something a little bit different. We focused a lot on Weir Yard, and in the past we focused a lot on Trinity Road and Grove Street Yard. But I thought you might like to know about what I did before then. And, you know, everybody builds up their modelling skills over time. And, you know, I'm no exception. When I first started, I fell into a lot of pitfalls. So I found some archive uh, photographs on one of my computers. And I thought I'd share with you uh, some of the memories of my very first proper model railway where I tried to, to do the modelling. So without further ado, come with me. It'd be great to have your company. Let's go and have a look. Hi there everyone, welcome along to another video here with me, Jenny Kirk. It's really good to have your company. I thought I would share with you some pictures. Most of these have never really been seen publicly before. And this is my very first model railway that I tried to build. Uh, it didn't even have a name. And originally I built this at my parents' house. It was built in modular form and I fell into all of the model railway pitfalls. And that includes rubbish baseboards made from a really bad material, MDF, uh, poor electrics, poor track work, poor everything. But it was a great learning curve. And that's what you have to take away from this. It's what I took away from this. I went on, I crafted some better and bigger models, uh, but the learning curve was very important. So the first picture that you see there, that's um, under construction, this layout. You can see We've got a lot of super quick buildings, uh, some of the Metcalf buildings as well. And this was back before I started to do a lot of kit bashing. And this is just kind of test putting stuff in places. I then moved on to where you can see here, getting the ballast down and another pitfall, far too much ballast, too much glue, very flat grass. Now, this picture is towards the other end of the layout. You can see that all coming together. And uh, trying to get a bit of 3D relief here. And again, it's quite a learning curve. I made quite a mess. There's a lot of polyfiller going in there too. But actually, the end result was pretty good. You can see there from another angle, I've got the, the colliery loading hopper. And um, I was this is, is sort of where I started to find some of my interest in industrial prototypes. And I really liked ballasting the track with coal dust to give that really kind of murky industrial unkempt look. So there's certain aspects of that that really did go down well. And actually, interestingly enough, the balsa wood that that uh, structure is made of went on to be used on Trinity Road. It was recycled as some of the bracing for uh, one of the retaining walls. Uh, another shot here, we've got uh, the goods yard and you can see it was, it, I, I liked it at the time, but I, I, you know, a lot of that was very flat. The buildings just didn't really quite work. So you can see here, I did manage to put together a pretty reasonable model. This is the goods yard area. I started to learn a little bit about uh, doing the ground cover. A lot of that ground cover there was done with sticking scrap pieces of balsa wood and stuff to the ground. And I discovered a product that was very much like masonry paint. So it was sand and paint mixed together. And you see a lot of that technique happening in my more recent models, uh, in my appearance on GMRC. But this is pretty much uh, where it all began, I suppose. Uh, the track work on this was not reliable. Uh, I didn't wire up the points and all of these are things that I really did regret. But a lot of the materials on here have been uh, subsequently recycled. So you can see there the uh, warehouse building at the back made it to Trinity Road, unfortunately got broken coming off there. So it doesn't persist. The two terraced houses, the, um, the sort of half relief ones, one of those has made it to Weir Yard after going through a stint at uh, Trinity Road. Uh, the other one made it as far as Trinity Road, didn't get any further. The signal box there became the Bolton West Junction signal box, then went on, and it's now on Weir Yard. 
Moving on a bit further, it's a bit of a different angle here, and you can see actually the little pug kit that made it to Grove Street Yard in the scrapyard, but uh, at this point, not really quite sure what to do with it. I'd weathered it up as uh, a lovely little, um, almost like scrap industrial logo, and it took a while to find a home for that. I also quite like this platform I made out of, um, you can buy big bags of Javis matchsticks, they're actually pretty good. That Weybridge hut, it's the super quick Weybridge hut, um, that again went through Trinity Road and I believe that is now on Weir Yard uh, just by one of the junctions, uh, still finding a good use. And it just goes to show that a lot of the stuff isn't wasted, you just got to recycle things, it's the way to go. Uh, another angle there, and you can see getting a bit of the industrial clutter out and about, but uh, that's the Hornby buffer stops, and I fell out of love with those when I found the Pico ones. There were some good angles here, but all of these pictures were being taken with the Fujifilm DX10, a very early digital camera. Um, not the greatest of cameras, it has to be said, but it's the only record I have of this model. You can see that I tried to get a sense of height, but I built this sort of rough and ready out of pieces of scrap MDF. And what that makes for is baseboards that warp very easily, but are still very, very heavy. You know, my original plan built it modular and, you know, I had this, this thought that, oh, I'd move it on to wherever I ended up living. And, uh, you know, I built these modules to kind of plug together and it ne never happens like that. So if you're thinking, I'll build modules here that I can then set up into a, a railway room later, trust me, never really quite works like that. Uh, I've got a few other angles here, but then talking about the modules, I went on, and this is a couple of the other modules that I built. None of these four modules could ever be put together in their entirety in one go because the room where they were built. Um, but you can see there, I got more and more adventurous with the scenery, with the levels. Um, look at the kinks in that track work. I think Stern Steve would not appreciate the kink that you can see just after the diamond crossing. Uh, but I, I experimented with different levels and built a, a one in 30 incline up there to the top level, mostly scenic, um, but it was, you know, getting this kind of interesting um, layer after layer and developing my scenery skills. So I saw a lot of progress even just between these four modules. This is going back to the original modules. You can see that coal loading stage in its finished form and also that ditch, which I was, I was actually very pleased at. And that was done using a variety of Humbrol paint colors, greens and browns to create a base and then varnish over the top. And I was quite pleased with the effect of that. You, know, you can actually make some quite good water effects very, very cheaply and easily if you put uh, put yourself to it. The ballasting as well, um, I found I enjoyed doing the ballasting quite early on. So you can see that the ballasting itself isn't really too bad. Now there's the boiler house there again, that's made it through three different layouts. This one, then into Trinity Road, and it's now up on Weir Yard. Those oil tanks are on Grove Street Yard now. Um, a lot of the other buildings did just get scrapped and junked. Um, a bit of a poor shot there, but it shows another aspect of that colliery loading mechanism. It shows there's a lot you can kind of fabricate to give a suggestion of some industrial construction out of the most basic of materials. Another angle there, poor lighting, but you can see my grass is still very flat. I hadn't discovered some of the static grass materials. It's kind of more fluffy grass at this point. But by the time we get to this module, you can see there the um, up and over and a much better coal loading point. That is scratch built from plastic hard, plastruct and other such things. And I found that actually I quite enjoyed making stuff like that. And that, that very rusty disused side. Would you, would you believe it? I did that by ballasting with, um, I put a bit of salt into the, the glue mix and rusted the track through electrolysis. I connected a controller up to it and it was, Pico used to sell steel, plain steel track. Um, it was a cheaper track, but you could make it rust by doing this. And if you rusted it by electrolysis, you actually got scale looking rust. Wasn't very good for running trains on though, it has to be said.
another angle there and dabbled there with a fair bit of narrow gauge on the top too and you can see that that um, uh, pug kit, airfix pug kit did move around a bit but I really like these this sort of sense of different levels with the trains going up and over and um, I found my love of building bridges with that bridge. The abutments are just carved out of scrap MDF covered in uh, super quick brick paper but actually worked really well for the day and that bridge itself those bridge girders still do get used and um, they ended up being I think they were the uh, overgirder bridges on the Newport Street Bridge out in Trinity Road. Um, I'm just trying to think what's actually happened to them now. They're probably just in my scrap box. I don't think I've reused them. Uh, another nice low angle there and you can see the trains over and under. It's a really good effect actually for a model railway which I've gone on to use on Weir Yard with the, the flyover for connecting the lower to the upper. Uh, parts of that marshalling yard. Another angle there at the fourth module and um, I, I, I think I, I did dramatically improve my scenery techniques. A lot of scratch building of bridges, there's like a little culvert bridge in the foreground. Um, I had several different designs of scratch built bridges for a little culvert that flowed across the layout and it was quite a good effect to be honest with you. Coming up again, you can see I'm developing that ground cover. And one of the things that I am very keen on is a range of textures and colours to build up a much more realistic ground cover. And you can see there, I've used sand, ballast, coal dust, just crush up a lump of real coal, sieve it to get the different grades. You want the kind of fine dust. And then a mix of, I started to find some of the gauge master flocks by this point. And was very very pleased with it. Never looked back on that. Also, you can see here going back to the other end of the layout, a lot more of the, the clutter that became a signature of the Grove Street Yard build, which followed on from this layout. I also like the idea of cameos. This a little cameo in the back streets I used doing the model scenes from Pico, uh, the the little figures, and they were quite expensive for my then. Um, a lot more meagre than now budget. But I love the cameos that you can put these figures to and it really does bring aspects of a layout to life, add extra layers of interest which I think is very important. You can see there from another angle and we've also got the milk churns there in the pub uh, backyard. That pub and the terraced houses as well that you see uh, they made it through to Trinity Road where they were uh, above the tunnel and then on to Weir Yard. Uh, they've all become the row of terraces just by the Bates Motel. I also developed a love of um, these sort of industrial angles, tight angles with the trains running through on, on neglected inset track. I, I do love this, this kind of aspect of railway modelling, this sort of gritty, dirty, pokey industrial premises. I, I just love that. Going back, another um, photo there, you can see uh, my class 24 there and just the experimentation, making pipe work there uh, out of uh, sprue work, which I carried over quite well onto uh, other models. Now, these photos are the final photos I took of this. What you can see here is the layout was kind of tidied up ever so slightly ready for the one and only article actually that it featured in and uh, this was an article I wrote for I think it was Model Rail about recycling old layouts you know when, when you reach the end of the line what to do to get the most back from your investment to reuse so I took a few decent photographs um, I'd already stripped a few bits off you can see there um, that some of the figures have gone. You can just make out the marks where the glue's pulled at the Metcalf cobbles. Um, but I tarted it up so that I could get these photos for that article. They were taken with a slightly better camera. Also see that lovely pond there. Very pleased with that effect. Again, the same Humbrol paint colours um, over the top of the MDF base layer, then a bit of varnish. Um, and then we move into the demise of this layout that uh, a whole series of photographs that I took 
for that model rail article and it may even have gone into model Janusz Fox magazine as well later on and this was salvaging how to salvage a lot of these items in a way that can be easily um, repaired and reused so you know you can see there the final final picture of what was left of this layout sad yes with all the track removed the buildings removed anything that could be recycled chiseled off there and um, using uh, some of my, my methods with boiling hot water and a syringe and a paint scraper and i got a lot back off that layout and when you look at Weir Yard, you look at Trinity Road as was, and even Grove Street Yard as well, you can see so much of this material has ended up getting recycled, saving a lot of money, time and effort. And I think that's important um, to, you know, be able to take buildings that you, you've loved in their former areas of, of model layouts and be able to reuse them and breathe new life into them. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that. Thanks again for watching. This is me, Jenny Kirk, saying don't forget to check us out on Patreon. You can also buy my books over on uh, Amazon and also from almostmedia.com. And uh, you can also subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. You'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But until next time, thanks for watching. It's been really good to have your company. Bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, and oorail.co.uk. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.